Good morning, family and Facebook friends. I am Irene, one of the disciples here at True Vine. If this is your first time visiting either here in person or virtually, and you are wondering who we are, let me tell you who we are. We are ordinary people serving an incredible God. You hear me? An incredible God. And we are on this journey together, trying to get closer to God. Our motto is, we are a church that is word fed and spirit filled. Spirit led, pardon me. We want to welcome you today to True Vine Church Worship Service. If you are a returning friend, we celebrate you. If you are a disciple of True Vine, we honor you. If you are listening to us via Facebook, please put a comment in the comment box and tell us who you are, what city or state you are in, like and share our page. Let's center ourselves and prepare for a move of God in our worship service. Buenos días, amigos y familia de Facebook. Yo soy Alejandra. Si es su primera vez aquí, este, sea en persona o virtualmente, y estás preguntándote quién somos, déjame decirte quién somos. Nosotros somos gente ordinaria que está sirviendo a un Dios. Y estamos juntos en este, en este viaje a acercarnos cerca a Dios. Nuestro dicho es, somos una iglesia que está apetecida por la por la palabra y el Espíritu de Dios. Te queremos bienvenir hoy a la iglesia de True Vine y si, eres regre si estás regresando, te celebramos. Si eres un discípulo, te honoramos. Si estás escuchándonos o visitándonos vía Face, por favor pon un comentario en, el, en la caja de comentarios diciéndote quién eres y de dónde y qué estado estás visitándonos. Y te invitamos a que compartas la página. Gracias. Come on, we're going to worship the Lord this morning. We're going to do both songs in English and in Spanish. So I just pray that you open up your hearts as we go into worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Beyond the rest Vestido en majestad, se alegra la creación, se alegra la creación. En luz rodeado está, la oscuridad se va y tiembla ante su voz, y tiembla ante su voz. Cuán Dios, canta no hay cuán grande es Dios, y todo lo verá, cuán grande es Dios. Oh, let's sing, how great is our God, church, come on. How great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God. Oh, 
Dios, cuando yo cuando es Dios, y todos lo worship you, oh God. Here we are to bow down and say that you are our God. So we worship you in this place, oh God. We give you all the praise and we give you all the honor for it is your name that is to be praised.
to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so we are going to read from Psalms 96, 1 through 9. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his holy name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations. His wondrous I lost his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols. 
But the Lord made the heavens honor and majesty before him. Strength and beauty are his sanctuary. Give to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Give to the Lord glory and strength. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I count to three. We're going to say praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> One, two, three. Praise the Lord. Lord. Oh, Lord. Him. Praise is what we do. Yes. Woo. New Testament reading. Romans, the eighth chapter, the 20, starting at the 24th verse, two verses. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man said. Why does he yet hope for? Hmm. But if he hope for that he see not, then he with patience wait for it. Amen. 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 That's two verses from Romans. May God bless the hearers of his word. Amen. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Good and gracious God. Glorious God, wonderful God, kind God, loving God. Lord, we love you. Lord, we honor you. Lord, we adore you, God. Lord, we welcome you into this holy place today, God. We know that your spirit dwells with us, God. God, let us feel your spirit today in this place, God. God, we thank you for Hispanic Heritage Month, God, and we thank you for the privilege, God, to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, God. God, we thank you for Back to Church Sunday, God. We thank you for all of the visitors, God, all of the friends, all of the families who have come to celebrate with us this Sunday for Back to Church Sunday, God. We pray that every Sunday, God, is back to church Sunday, God. God, we want a revival in the land, God. We want to draw people near to you and unto you, God. So let True Vine be a pillar of hope and faith in this community, God. And so people will know that this is a place where they can come and be word fed, God, and spirit led, because we are people of excellence, God, in this church, God. We strive, God, to be people of excellence, God. So as our service goes on today, God. We pray for the shepherd of this house, God. We pray for Bishop Trevor Alexander, God, as he delivers a word today, God. God, we pray for his lovely wife, our overseer, Emma Alexander, and all of his children, God. God, we pray for ministry leaders in this place, God, because we are busy, God, in true vine working for you, God. God, and we pray for each and every family, every disciple, God, every deacon, every welcomer, every usher, God, every praise worshiper, God, the keep musicians, God. God, we pray for every child in this church, God. God, we pray for them as they go to school, God. God, we know that we are not safe in the world, but we are not people of fear. You have not given us a spirit of fear, God, but you have given us a spirit of love and of faith and of sound mind, God. And so we don't fear the world, God. Because we are, we're not of the world, we're in the world, God, but we're not of the world, God. So God, continue to show us, God, let today be a mark, God, on our consciousness, God, that we are not people of the world. We are people in the world, godly people in the world. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 What time is it? Awesome. You may be seated. Amen. Hola, mi familia. All right, y'all. All right. We are excited. It's been a great time. I'm going to take this moment. Can we clap for our music ministry? Y'all did fun.
phenomenal, beautiful job. Clap for them, clap for them, clap for them. Yes, I am excited. The Lord is stretching us and doing some great things. So hello to everyone that is streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. Hey, y'all. Um, we are getting ready to do Kingdom Investment. So if you want to know how to give, you can cash app, dollar sign, true vine essay. Again, it is dollar sign, true vine essay. You can give by PayPal, mail, or you can text. If you text 54244 and type TVC in the message, a link will pop up so that you can give through your mobile. All right. If you need a envelope, the ushers are available to pass the envelopes. We do take cash. Hallelujah. We take checks and we even take the change. Thank the Lord. It makes a dollar. OK, so we're going to take it all. Hallelujah. So if you have even a couple of cents to give, you're giving with the cheerful hearts. Amen. Amen. So our music ministry is going to give us some music to get y'all prepared. And when we are ready, the ushers will be on the side to pass you your um, the gift baskets. I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do Cause I need you more and more Oh, oh, I'm chasing after you No matter what, no matter what I have to do
Father God, thank you for today's offering. Bless those who could give and those who couldn't. Lord God, we ask that you bless it tenfold for the presence of your kingdom's work. All this we ask in thy precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My needs are met. My needs are met. I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. I have more in store. I have more in store for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. Amen. So, uh, Drew Vine, what did you think about our praise team and our musicians? Weren't they awesome? Ms. Veronica and her family and I came in yesterday because I know her daughter sings in the praise team. So we came in here to kind of decorate for today, and we were listening to them, and I was like, huh, look at them, you know? And I asked... Uh, elder tara if they could do some spanish songs she says oh yeah she said i'll fix them up i said honey it's all on you so i want to give them another applause for the job okay anyway welcome everybody here everybody looks beautiful even our bishop and <laughs> overseer we love you <laughs> and also before i start all this uh, uh <laughs> the praise team said that I reminded them of the grandma in, in, in what is it called? In, Encanto, that movie, that cartoon. <laughs> so that's what they said, but I love them anyway. Anyway, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, each, year, each year we uh, observe Hispanic Heritage Month from September 15th through October 15th. Bishop wasn't too happy about all that time we get, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> by celebrating uh, the histories, cultures, and contributions of community members whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America, from all communities that identify as Hispanic. The observation started in, in 1868 as heritage, I mean, I'm sorry, the observation started in 1968 as Heri uh, Hispanic Heritage Week under President Lyndon Johnson and was expanded by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period, starting on September 15th and ending on October 15th. It was enacted in law on August 17th, 1988, on the approval of Public Law 100-402. Many have heard about the day thousands of people all throughout Mexico uh, congregate to, to what literally translate to the scream. However, this day is not just a regular national synchronized scream. September 16th is the day that the Mexican independence is celebrated. On this day in Dolores Hidalgo, Guanajuato, in 1810, El Padre Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla rang the bells of a small uh, parish and inspired the people who gathered to rebel against the Spanish monarchy and take control of their own lives, their own country, their own destiny. His grito galvanized thousands of people, mostly poor natives, to take action and change Mexico forever. Today, Mexico continues the tradition of El Grito, the night before the celebration of independence. Around midnight on September the 15th, the Mexican president delivers a patriotic speech commemorating the fallen heroes of independence as he rings the bells at the National Palace in Mexico City. He finishes the speech by exclaiming three times, Viva Mexico, Viva Mexico, Viva Mexico. El Grito dates back to the 1800s when the country was yearning for freedom from Spain after being forced into slavery for more than 300 years. After the French invaded Spain in 1808, the Mexicans saw an opportunity to break away from the Spanish rule. Secret societies were formed where members began promoting independence and hatching plans to attack the enemy. 
Miguel Hidalgo y Costilla is considered the father of Mexican independence. The priest in Dolores, Guanajuato was passionate about restoring the rights of all Mexicans and belong and belong to the one of the secret societies. After several members were arrested by Spaniards in September of 1810, Hidalgo rallied the townspeople to fight back the night of September 15th. On September 16th, Hidalgo rang the church bell in Dolores to announce a revolution for freedom and the war against Spain was declared. Father Hidalgo's battle cry was dubbed El Grito de Dolores and El Grito de Independencia. Along with the Mexican army, the war was supported by a troop of Native Americans and peasants. They successfully took control of several major cities before reaching Mexico City. After months of fighting, Hidalgo's battle-weary and depleted army began to collapse. In January 1811, the priest tried to flee to the United States, but was captured and executed by a firing squad. The war went on for 11 more years after Hidalgo's death. Another army had already emerged by that time and they continued to fight, commanded by Jose Maria Morelos, a student of Hidalgo in the Colegio de San Nicolas. Ignacio Allende, Mariano, Absolo, and many others helped lead the movement until victory was declared. Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! Viva Mexico! <laughs> I love it. Beautiful. Praise God. We praise God. Beautiful. I don't think we had a chance to say thank you to Alex. She did the interpretation. Let's clap for her. She did an awesome job. Thank you so much. I asked her at the last moment. She said, sure. I'm like, thank you. And you did phenomenal. Um, today is also not just Hispanic Latin, uh, Latino month, but also back to church. So we had National Back to Church Day and we had asked people to bring visitors and we see some people who brought visitors. So if you have your guests, we ask you to stand and share your guests. I guess your guests. The whole side of the church. You are Eunice. I see Eunice. You have guests too. Everybody who brought guests, you share your guests. Okay. So, Minister. How about my best friend Tiffany and her son this morning? I bought, brought my wonderful mother this morning, Javace Wilson. I invited my daughter, Kedra Brickley, my son. I can't see too good. I see, I see Tim, his family, my sister, Rose Denny and her husband. Just stand up, because I can't see too good. Oh. <laughs> All right. It, it looked dark over there. That's my eyes, you know, but I, I, it, it one, I don't see my oldest sister. Hey, that's my oldest sister. <laughs> I, I want to see my oldest sister. I have five sisters and no brothers. <laughs> Yeah, they had to put up with me. They had to beat me up too, Joe. But uh, <laughs> but I thank God for my family that came, my granddaughters, my I had a couple of great grand grandkids, but they not here. So thank you all for coming out. Hey, little Timmy. <laughs> Ain't gonna let you live that down. Amen. Well, we know anybody else, any other guests that we Jessica has a guest. Come on, Jessica. <laughs> Not me, Brandy. Uh, I brought my best friend, Brandy. I'm sorry. 
Amen. Amen. Brandy's a, a student at UIW as well. So praise the Lord. And she helped decorate. And she helped decorate and we put her straight to work. <laughs> welcome to UIW and welcome to True Vine. We are the church that is world fed, spirit led. If you show up, we put you to work. <laughs> praise the Lord. Um, well, I, I don't think we need to count who won, got the most guests. We know. We know. The first can, gift. So the first gift. <laughs> It's a shame you got to bribe somebody brings people to church. It's a shame. It's a shame. Okay, so who has um, you, two? Two. Um, anybody has more than two? Two. Michael. Now, now, Michael, I want to say this. You call me up. Told me you was gonna win this thing. <laughs> he tried. <laughs> he told me. He called me. Told me get his money ready. That's <laughs> so bad. Okay, praise the Lord. All right. <laughs> grandkids. Well, grandkids count. Yes, you got your grandkids. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wait. 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 That, no. Why are you raising your hand, Jada? <laughs> Praise God. Right afterwards, we're having a food truck. We're gonna treat your three, um to the food truck. Well, I'm so excited for you, but we just want to share. So, praise God. Yes. Huh? Say again. Yes, ma'am. Archdeacon Terry. They set up. Right afterwards, we will be fellowshipping right outside. They've already set up the tents and the tables, and we have a food truck coming. So, stay to fellowship. Yes. Yes. Working in unity. Amen. Love it. Yes. Who's introducing it? Archdeacon, we put it in hands. <laughs> Good morning, True Vine, Facebook family. Oh, I'd be remiss if I don't do this first, but. Um, my wife wanted me to say this so we could get it out there early. The Christmas trailer fundraiser for the San Antonio Children's Shelter is we're going to start it next week. Not every child will be with family and friends this Christmas season. The holidays are not all about re receiving, but giving. Please help the children at the children's shelter this season by no donating. Spread the holiday cheer to those who are less fortunate. True Vine Church will start a donation box on Sunday, December, uh, Sunday, September 25th, we want to fill a trailer full of items. A list of items will be available in the blast next week. Now, I don't need a paper to introduce my bishop, my friend. I want to make this short, quick, and sweet. In the Bible, it says you study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. My bishop not only study, he meditates, he goes in and he makes sense out of the King James version of the thou art and the, all the others that some of us don't understand. He comes up and he makes it plain. Nobody I've seen in my 61 years does it like you. Beautiful wife, three kids, people, my bishop is truly blessed. He's new to some, known to others. I introduce to you Bishop Trevor Dean Alexander. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Testing one, testing. All right, praise the Lord. You may be seated. We'll... 
we do thank God for each of you. It, 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 it's funny. Um, as I look around the Grant family, I, I believe I know I knows everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for each of you. Thank God. I don't know if there's any strangers in here that I've not met yet. And if I haven't met you, see me at that. Jada, don't you raise your hand. <laughs> you too, AJ. <laughs> we see me afterwards so we can personally get to know each other. We are thankful for this Sunday. This is National Back to Church Sunday. But I'm really excited about the Hispanic Latino Heritage Month because all of this month we are going to celebrate um, our Hispanic brothers and sisters, our Latino brothers and sisters, and learn more. Amen? Amen. So Sister Irene and her team, she's already out there going to work already. So Sister Irene and her team is has been and is working hard to make this, this celebration this year a little bit more intentional than before. And thank God for our praise team. Amen. Lord Jesus. Y'all started singing. So, and, and, um, Lisa Rivera, trying to ex that's a Spanish too. So, <laughs> and thank God for our musicians. Come on, give it up. And he's back. Abel and Michael. So we got MGM, they're back again. So thank God for you. All right, y'all ready for the word? Ready. ready for the word. I want to thank God for my wife, the one that makes my liver quiver and my spleen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Squeaky clean. Yeah, squeaky clean. And I want to thank God for my my children. They uh, they're watching online in Houston. So my Tara, my Tasha, and my Tanya. When I say mine, they were good. Okay. And uh, praying for Brother Joseph. He has surgery coming up in uh, October. <laughs> All right. So we will pray for him as well. All right. Y'all ready for the word? Yes, we are. If you have your Bible, let's turn to Acts chapter 2, verse uh, 14. And I'm going to mess Terry up because I'm going to read from the message translation. Not much different from King James. I'm giving Pastor Jeff time to get to this because he's still in the Old Testament. He had to figure out that Acts is in the New Testament. Give him time, he'll get there. All right, Acts chapter 2. Again, this is from the Message Bible, and it says that when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11, spoke out with bold urgency, saying, Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. This is the word of God for the people of God. People say, thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God. Yeah, one verse. One verse. A few weeks ago, we had the home going of Pastor Mamie Funches, about two weeks ago. And Pastor Claudette Anderson Copeland preached the eulogy. And in her part of her message, she mentioned that we Christians need to be exit role qualified. Exit role qualified. For those of you who travel, know that when you get on a plane, you have more leg room with the exit row. But everybody and their mama can't sit at the exit row. She went on to say that there are three qualifications for the exit row. You need to be able to see, you need to be able to hear, and you need to be able to assist others if the need arise. I went home and I started meditating on that. Matter of fact, I even texted her to tell her that I was exactly because I can see and hear. And I believe the qualification you need to lift up over 40 pounds. I can do that. So I am exit role qualified. So I was meditating on that. And that, uh, last week I was in Rochester, New York for another funeral and the Lord dropped in my spirit. The title for today's word is I may count myself unworthy, but I am qualified. I may count myself as unworthy, but I am qualified. My assignment is simple. 
that we have to move beyond our mistakes, understand that we are regenerated and that we are qualified for the kingdom of God. Move beyond our mistakes, understand that we are regenerated and we are qualified for the kingdom of God. The first point I want to talk about today is that we need to change our lens. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Vaughn <laughs> might need to use my glasses because he can't see. Um, we need to change our lenses. On my flight back to San Antonio from Rochester, I went online to look at my seating arrangements. Because I didn't book the flight, Sister Terry did. On the way to uh, Rochester, I had a seat in the aisle. Those that know me, I like the window seat. The reason I don't like the, I, I don't like the middle seat. Y'all know what's wrong with the middle seat? It's in the middle. It's in the middle. Everybody and their mama is fighting for the armrest, right? I have a name I call that seat, but it's, it's, it's a punk seat. That's what, he's, <laughs> that's, that, that's what I call it. I don't mind sitting on the aisle because you get to move around faster, get out a little faster. But when you're sleeping, and your head is hanging out, everybody and their mama bumped your head, waking you up. So I decided to see on my flight returning if I can upgrade from the aisle seat. And I looked at the exit row, and there were empty seats on both my flights, at the exit row. $24. I thought I can. I can afford that. I am qualified. I can hear. I can see. And I can assist others. I'm qualified for the exit room. I did not purchase the flight, the, the, the seat, not because I didn't have the money, but my colleague, my friend, Bishop John Harker, was traveling with me. If I had purchased the seat, he would not have been able to go with me because there was only one seat available on both flights. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere. I could have purchased the flight, the seat. Sat comfortable, had leg room. But my friend couldn't sit. I'm sitting. What am I? Um, I hear you. I hear you. Could have purchased it. Had the money. Could have traveled comfortably. But my colleague, my friend, would not have been able to sit where I was sitting and experience the comfort with the extra leg room of the exit row. I'm amazed at how many of us will come to church. Get dressed up, sit in your exit room, walk by your neighbors, and do not invite them where you're sitting. Exit row qualify. I've even given an acronym. E -R Are you ERQ today? Now, with the exception of Minister Vaughn, how many of us? Now, we don't have to wait till it's National Latino Month to folks. All right. And we surely don't need to wait until it is National Back to Church Sunday, which only happens once a year in September to invite people. If you can enjoy the luxury of sitting in the exit row, because you can see, because you can hear, you're able to assist others, how it comes. You can't assist somebody to go to church. Oh, okay. Mm. I, I, I just thought somebody was going <laughs> Now, my glasses are old. And they take, they're transitions. It takes longer for my glasses to transition like, like they were. So but sometimes when I walk into a room, the room looks and I'm like, why don't somebody put on the lights? 
And then when the trans, my glasses are fully transitioned, I'm like, it's not the light's fault. It was my lens's fault. So when you begin to change your lens, change your attitude, change your opinion, of, uh, uh, I'm, I'm gonna pick up Minister Michael, even folks that you don't like, your frenemies, and bring them to church, they might become your brother and your sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. My, 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 my lenses need to make a transition from the external to the internal. Right. Oh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Um, it's easy for me to make the adjustment externally. Yeah. But the internal adjustments are harder because I must look at myself to see how I see the other. Mm, I'm going, I'm, uh, hang on, I'm going there. Um, so when, I, when my transition kicks in, I begin to see clearly I cannot be the only one in the exit room because if we are doing our job and if I know I've made some mistakes in my past and if I've been regenerated and I'm qualified for the kingdom, I need to make sure there are others who are just as qualified as me. Amen. Amen. Uh, you, you, thank you. Thank you. you, you when we shift the lenses, we begin to see what God sees. Right. We begin to go where God wants us to go, not where we want to go. That, that, that's point number one. Let me go to point number two. Trust the process. We're in God's hands. That's right. Trust the process. We're in God's hands. Um, Struggle. Not y'all. I struggle trying to understand God. If anybody has figured it out, please let me know. I need a class. I have been trying to understand God for a long time. Sometimes God would do some stuff that just don't make no sense. Um, God will promote people who I don't think they're qualified to be promoted. Okay, you see, y'all have me out there by myself. There's some people who God has qualified and I know their past. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out why God qualified them. Does he not know what I know? And if he doesn't know, let me give him back, let me give him a helping hand. I know what they did last night, God. But yet you promote them. Um, can I just be transparent for some? I used to be, and still am, Al Green fan. I love me some Al Green. Oh, you're not in your head. You know, you know Al Green? How you know? Okay. <laughs> um, I used to listen to Al Green, and then I found out Al Green got saved, started pastoring church. I bought every spiritual song he ever wrote. I, I, I played it all. One day I heard him doing an interview. Talking about he doesn't do no concert until unless he can get back to his church on Sunday. I said, uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh, not Al. Al, you can't be going and, 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 and gyrating and then going to church on Sunday. <laughs> Why y'all just got quiet on me? <laughs> Cannot be going to a concert on Saturday and then going to church on Sunday and he got a big church. I said, Lord, mm -mm. (laughs) I got a problem. I'm trying to do it my way, which I think is the right way. And he gets promoted. I still listen to Al Green, by the way. (laughs) He's good, right? Come on. Um, So I have problems with who God's chooses and qualified. Can I take a moment and just use some biblical characters who I've had some problems with? Okay. Um, Old Testament Joseph. The practice. Mm-hmm. Moses was in, had insecurity. Gideon would rather hide than pick up the mantle of leadership. Samson didn't know how to keep a secret. Elijah, uh, uh, Solomon was a womanizer. The only y'all act like, no, he got 300 wives and 700 concubines. That's a Thank you. He's a womanizer. Elijah suffered from depression. 
and have suicidal t- tendencies. The disciples abandoned Jesus. And yet, there's a gentleman by the name of Paul who persecuted Christians and he got qualified and he got promoted. Sometimes God just don't make no sense. <sighs> Some of the people who's got these wonderful gifts. These folks that can sing and preach. Y'all want me to sing? (laughs) That's not my gift. I stay in my lane. (laughs) And there's some people who have these gifts that if I'm honest and if you're honest, you won't even follow them either. God qualified them. All right. But God, thank you. We come to Peter. Peter doesn't look like a leader. And I have to admit that if I would have followed Peter, I want to let y'all know that when I first got saved, the two people I, I was gravitated to, Moses and Peter. Studied them inside out because I found me in, a, in both of them. I can make excuses for the best of them. And I can cut off some air. Mm-hmm. Peter doesn't look like he should be a leader. He's hot tempered. He doesn't look like a leader. But yet in the text, we see him as a leader. Let me, let me see if I can lay out my case for Peter. Peter was one of the first four that was called by Jesus. Matter of fact, he was mending his net in Matthew's gospel. And Jesus says, uh, Peter, I know you've been busy and everything. I want to use your boat. Put your boat out to shore so I can use it as my pulpit. Peter was there. It was also Peter that Jesus rebuked. After he gave the discourse about the son of man must suffer, it was Peter that Jesus rebuked. It was Peter that cut off the Roman soldier's ear. He said, got some streets in him. Come on. Y'all, y'all don't know. Peter would cut off some ear. And, and he qualifies. But it was Peter, who is now a leader, that denied Jesus three times. Okay, you don't have a problem. I got a problem. How in the world would you qualify somebody, promote them, and they don't acknowledge you? Three times. And yet, that don't make no sense. Not in my book. Hmm. And now we come to the text. Peter's filled with the Holy Spirit and he begins to speak on behalf of God. The last time I saw Peter, he was hiding. Now he's speaking. I don't see no evidence that he repented. Okay, maybe you okay with that? In certain scriptures, if you find it, please let me know. I don't see no evidence that Peter repented. I saw an action that, that he repented. The Bible said and he wept bitterly. He had remorse for what he did. But here is where, where some of us can still get caught up. We're still trying to figure out he repented. Because we don't read it in scripture that he said, Lord, forgive. So just because we don't see what we're looking for, we disqualify them from leaving. Mm. Now he's speaking on behalf of God and speaking on behalf of the disciples and they're okay with it. That's another sign. Because if I am working on behalf of God and you bring your happy self don't look like you be standing next to me, I'm going to let you know something. But the very fact that 
did not say anything to Peter. Peter was in good standing. All right. Okay. Whoa. That, okay. We have to be careful. That we don't judge people from where the last time we saw them. That's right. good. That's right. That's right. He was running last time. He got qualified before you saw him last. Go tell my disciples, Peter. You weren't there when the disciples came to tell Peter. You still stuck on Peter hiding and denying. The Lord qualified him before he put him. Come on here. We're struggling. And we saw you was in the club. Clean, because the last time we saw you, you were fifteen women around you. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, that's sexist. The last time I saw you, you got a phone book, and you got fifteen. To none of them. So now you stand up. And I'm looking at your phone book. The same was in. And now you want to tell me about Jesus? Go and get yourself right before you come talk to me. Am I in the house? Okay. But Peter was requalified before he went to the upper room. Um. that we don't take shortcuts to our destination. Because in the shortcuts, it might to sustain you when you get to your destination it will be missing and you become underdeveloped. Sometimes following the Lord Long way is more beneficial than the shortcut. Mm. It's not a destination, it is done during the destination. Once you got to the end, you need it while you were walking. Uh, don't let the opinion of others hold you back from now he denied Jesus standing by swarming himself by strange fires but he was qualified he's a leader qualified by God. But there are people that still have an opinion about Peter. And there's people that still have opinions about you. And if we're honest with ourselves, some of us would have been further along if we did not listen to the negative, negative voices. We have voices that told us that we were not smart enough, that we were not good enough. They were not good looking enough. That we're too fat. We're too skinny. We're too small. We didn't fit an image. And because we listened to those voices, we did not pursue the path that God had laid out for us. We substituted it for something else. Thank you, Minister. Two claps. Um, <laughs> we, we, we. Allow them to talk us out of the plans that God had for our lives. And we now think that we are unworthy to be where God is calling us to be. Some of us have become stagnant. And we lost our self-worth by listening to the opinions of others who did not know what God's plan is for you. Yeah, that's right. So you disqualified yourself. But I'm here to tell you, you may have unworthy. But God has qualified you for the kingdom. In spite of your faults, he still qualified you. Can I just add this in for, for free? 
Some of us are better leaders today because of what we went through yesterday. Amen. Amen. I want, I want to, this is news flash. News flash. Some of us have allowed the opinions of others to infiltrate our spirit, and they are dictating your path. Can I say this? Stop listening to them. They don't know your path. And, and the criticism they're giving you is what Sigmund Freud called projection. It's really what's going on inside of them that they're projecting onto you. So if they got insecurity, they put it on you, so you should become insecure. Hmm. I'm here to tell you that church folks, church folk. not Christians, church folks will criticize you to cover up the shortcomings. Now, now I, I got to tell you, there's a difference between church folk and Christians. Church folk will talk about you, criticize you, but a Christian will love you to the cross. All right. Church folk. The reason why some folk don't come to church today, because they came across church folk. Church folk act like they perfect. Church folk like they got it going on. And they're going to thank you. <laughs> and church folk will say, I'm perfect and look like you are imperfect and treat you as they are superior and you are less than. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus came for the sick. He came for those who are imperfect. And if you are here today and you think yourself perfect, please stand so I can do a benediction over you because this message is not for you. <laughs> if we are exit road qualified, we are trusting God in the process. Let me get to this, this next point. The next point is we have to be redeemed. I like superheroes. I watch Marvel. I don't watch them all, right? I used to read comic books. With super. I like Superman because he can leap tall buildings at a signal bounds faster than the speed of locomotive. Oh, yeah, this is old school Superman. <laughs> Superman has strength. I like Thor because Thor's gift is a hammer. I like Wonder Woman because she can. I like Hulk, cause Hulk can smash. <laughs> but there is one superhero that every Christian should be should resonate with. All right. Yeah, I know you want to know who it is. Ready? Yeah. Wolverine. Oh. <laughs> okay, put a twist on you, huh? Yeah. Wolverine can regenerate. Yeah. If Wolverine gets stabbed, shot, give him a minute, he regenerate. <laughs> Christians should resonate with Wolverine. Yeah. You don't want to get wounded if you walk in with Jesus. Right. But you got to be regenerated. Yes. People will stab you in your back, but you got to regenerate, get back in the game, because that's how. Okay, don't take my word for it. They crucified Jesus. He rose from the cross, came back, showed Thomas his wound, but he still was in the game. Come on. Peter is standing with the 11 because he has been regenerated. Yeah. Now Jesus got qualified back into the fold and now he's speaking on the behalf of God. Regeneration. Regeneration. Here's the evidence of his regeneration. Let me read it. Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and said, only people who are regenerated don't mind standing up when they need to stand up. Right. Only those who have been regenerated don't have a on behalf of God. Peter is not timid Amen. and he's not screwed. Right. Peter is standing bold. It is here that I recognize God. Peter. He has been given another chance. See, when you are regenerated, you have a Hey, you may have made some may have made some mistakes, but in this reaching process, you have been given another chance. 
I was going to say that second chance, but if you're like me, I went past second a long time ago. I'm, I'm, I'm on so many chances, I can't even count no more. So I'm just glad for another chance, another chance. Uh, Peter has been given another chance. No matter where we came from, no matter what we have done, we have been regenerated for another chance. Okay, okay. here's where I love the old saints. Old saints have those hymns that will right? Uh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me because I've been regenerated, something happens in my soul and my soul hallelujah thank God for saying that's a regeneration that's a regeneration uh, uh, so Peter had been regenerated and he's walking with those that he walked with that he walked from Another sign, he's been regenerated. The Bible said there was 120 in the upper room, but Peter is standing with the 11. Okay, um, can, I, can I walk, I got to walk this a little slowly. 120 people have been filled with the, but Peter is only standing with the 11. I'm gonna do this one more time. There's 120 that have been filled, but Peter is standing with the 11. Um, hmm. Sometimes we need to know who to separate from. Not because they did anything wrong, but everybody can't go where you're going. Now, this separation takes maturity yeah, my, my, my. because you have to be able to separate without burning bridges. Yeah. Everybody can't go where I'm going. Yeah. Even though you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, um, my pathway is from yours and what I have to go through you may not be able to handle so I'm mature enough to go where I'm going uh, um, you don't need a lot of people in your life just the right people I got that from evangelists Apollonia, Apollonia, Venom of Ava. Yeah. I have to throw that in there because I have to I put my Hispanic brothers and sisters in there. Um, we trying to get everybody. Everybody can't walk where you're walking. Only the right people can go with you. Ooh, I got, okay, let me move on. I'm, I'm, uh, so, okay. John Mark with him. And at some point, he sent him home because he wasn't fit to go away. But later on, he said, go and get John Mark. Now he's ripe. He's mature now. Yeah. He's got some, some stuff under his belt. Yeah. We can't take immature people in mature places. Yeah. Um, this boy, that was so good. Um, can I use you? Can I give you a testimony? You sure? All right. Brother man said he started selling dope at 16. And the dope man told him that there was a consequences, but he did it anyway. He made a choice. Um, if you have regenerated, you can't go to what you're not delivered from. Come on now. Mm. Um, can I, can I, um, oh, can I get have a, a transparent moment? A revelation this week. All right. Here's my revelation. I have not celebrated King Charles. Good. And the reason why I have not celebrated him, because I did not, had not forgiven him. That. <laughs> Uh, 
is a revelation. What you have not forgiven. To come to terms with the stuff. So I can celebrate King Charles. Enemy tried to attack me by telling me you are bishop and you still got unforgiveness in your heart. Try to make me. But I had to tell him I'm qualified. But wait a minute. Here it goes. Wanda Twin. Y'all remember the Wanda Twins? Wanda Twin powers activate. He came at my mind. Even by Wanda Twin G. And we connected. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We activated. Um, he came after my mind. Tried to help me to think that I was unqualified because I had unforgiveness in my heart. I had to purge that stuff. Yeah. Self right, and then a scripture dropped in my mind said, Where two or three are gathered in his name. Yes. Uh, you can't get at this mind if I know the word. Then the word said, If two or three are touching and agreeing. So once I activated my faith with my wonder twin Jesus, je gone, gone, couldn't stop thinking in my action because I understand who I am. Okay, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm getting ready to close. This is, um, he's starting counting. <laughs> he counting, I can tell. Yeah. He ain't been here in a while, so he's he going to count. Um, I'm getting ready to close my last point. Never underestimate your supporting cast. Never underestimate the supporting cast. Okay. Uh, the sometimes called the Acts According to the Apostles, is about the apostles. And we focus on the apostles as the leading actors. But they could not do what they had, what they did. They did not cast. And the supporting cast is the Holy Spirit. All this starts in Acts. Yeah. Because they got filled with the Holy Spirit. And they walked out under the power of the Holy Spirit, talking and moving and transforming the world. Yeah. But the supporting cast enabled them to face what they were facing. We see a Peter today in the Acts. That's not the Peter from the Gospels. Yeah. The Peter from the Gospels was cutting off air, cussing folks out. Peter that's here today have learned something. The old Peter had it. All right. Y'all know what foot of mouth disease is? You open your mouth and insert your foot. Mm -hmm. how, how many people has ever done that other than me? Oh, listen. Can I, here's sidebar real quick. Um, when I was a young, probably first class, waiting to be promoted to specialist. The list came out, two people got promoted. And I've been in a unit longer than they have. I have a better background than they have. I have a clean record. And they got promoted ahead of me. So me with my uncontrolling self, myself into the commander's office, bypass the first sergeant to tell the commander about him and his promotion. Yes, I did. Finish. I walked out. The salute going out. First sergeant, whose office is right from here, said, come here. He said, look at this. With my promotion. <laughs> He took that thing and put him out. <laughs> because I was immature. And I thought I controlled my destiny. I'm going somewhere. But this Peter that we see before us has been regenerated. And he knows when he speaks and when not to speak. 
people who are mature don't suffer from foot and mouth disease. Oh, I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing. And so Peter, still in the upper room, be regenerated, begin to speak on behalf of God. It was here that Bishop Troy Anthony Bronner closed out the wake in Rochester, New York, talking about the Holy Spirit. And he gave us the terminology of the Holy Spirit in Greek. And in Greek, the Holy Spirit is paraclete. I'm studying because I didn't want to be outdone. I got it in the Paracletos. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, this number two. Oh, you count now. <laughs> see, you, you know, you recruited you. Okay, all right. Let me see how I can close this up. Um, Paraclete, Paracletus. That didn't shout nobody. Okay. When your world is upside down and it feels like you are falling, I'm your parachute. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was good, huh? Okay, hold on. I got more. I got more. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh -huh. Um, when you are facing trouble, yes, sir. he will become your paralegal. Yeah. When you're not feeling well, he will become your paramedic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and when you're facing situation with overwhelming odds, he will come beside you and make you sit and become a month. Mm, I'm going, I ain't finished yet. Don't wear, don't rush me. And when you're on your journey of feeling weary and look like things are really on your way, he pulls beside you and walk with you parallel. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And sometimes when you feel the Holy Spirit, he gives you a new paradigm. Oh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And then when you come to the end of your journey. Uh -huh. He will lead you into paradise. Yeah. When you get to paradise, you can rest from your weary traveling. Paradise, no more sorrow, no more wounds, no more disruption. Peace, because you have walked into paradise. Close. You may count yourself as unworthy. You may count yourself as But when you have been regenerated and the Lord filled with the Holy Spirit, he will walk with you and walk you parallel till he can go before you make your crooked way straight and your high place is low. So when you walk into paradise, you're ready. Praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's clap again for the word. Oh my gosh, we thank God for the word on today. Thank God for the Holy Spirit that walks beside us, leads us and guides us, mm. empowers us to be warriors, to be mighty, to be great, to work together as a team, to work in unity. My God. To have those that will walk in our places and that said that we couldn't, but God open them doors and say that we can. God is just so good. Praise God. Bishop, thank you for that word. Thank you for that word. I was just reflecting on, if you haven't seen, and, I, and I'm throwing it out there, the movie Woman King, go see it for yourself. It's worth seeing. You come out empowered. It is um, uplifting so many different things out of there that you can get. Someone asked me the other day, oh, you're going to get a message from out of there? I'll say, I got a couple of them out of there. So it, it is a very powerful message. But as Bishop was talking about today, don't let anybody disqualify you from what God has qualified you from. Remember, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in God's image. Not in your past and not in your, your mistakes, but when you accept Christ into your life, he cleans you up, gives you a new outset. And even if the midst as you're going through and you fall, you can get back up and say, God, forgive me and keep on walking. 
that's the thing about God. He loves us unconditionally. You know what? I had said, y'all stand up. We're going to pray because sometimes when we stand up, there just gives you an opportunity to feel more. Okay. I can speak into some people today. If you have a relationship, good seeing everybody. Y'all look so good. If you don't have a relationship with the Lord, talking to young people, seniors, those who are watching us on Facebook, maybe later on YouTube, and you heard something today and it's like, oh man, that resonated with me, but you don't have a relationship yet. I want to speak to you. God says he loves you. I don't care what you've done in your past, what you did even this morning. He still loves you. All you got to do is ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, to be asking to be your God that will lead and guide you. And he would fill you with the Holy Spirit, seal you into the day when he comes back. And if there's some who's had a relationship, second people I'm talking to, and you may be backslidden. And if that's you today, today is your day. It says, harden not your heart. When you hear the word of God, God is calling you back into the fold. He says he loves you. He forgives you. He'll restore you. He'll regenerate you. And then you speak boldly. You don't have to walk around with your head down. Be ashamed. Yeah, we've all done some things that are wrong. But my God, yeah, I got a past. Don't let nobody hold you back in your past. Because God has a great future for you. Because the plans he has for you are good and not of evil. Yeah, I'm talking to some of my young people and some of our adults today. You hear me? I know you feel, I feel that in your spirit. God is speaking to you. And those that are watching right now, maybe you're sick in your body, emotionally, and um, physically, psychologically. And you're like, God, but I have not forgiven some people. They have hurt me. They've wronged me. And I've seen it. But you know what? You're walking free and you're walking on this tightrope and you can't move forward. Yeah. God does not want you to be stuck in this walk with him. All you have to do is release that today. And if that's you, that you need to be saved or you just want to rededicate your life or you need prayer, just slip your hand up. You, everybody, matter of fact, just close your eyes so you don't have to worry about nobody else watching you. And if that's you, go ahead and raise your hand. Do we have anybody today? That wants to give the life back to the Lord that says, yes, God, I need you to to give me another chance. Or if you need healing, raise your hand. And I see you today. I see you today. I see your hands going up. I see your hands. I see your hands. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you that you see us. You see us here in the building. You see us there that we're watching virtually wherever we may be in our cars and our homes. God, but we thank you that you are everywhere. You're omnipresent, God. Thank you for your grace and for your mercy that you extend to us each day. Thank you for another opportunity today. God, we say, forgive me. I've fallen short. Thank you, God. Thank you that you still love me and you count me qualified. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, God. I get another opportunity, another chance. Give me the wisdom. Give me the growth. Give me the maturity, God, to, to continue to walk and make better choices. Live within me and help me because I can't do it in my own might or my own strength. So, God, we thank you for those who have said yes to you today to be a, um, a disciple of you, of salvation. Those who said, God, forgive me. My walk has not been close as it needs to be. I need to be closer. So, God, I thank you that you're healing those whose hearts have been broken and you will restore, you will rejuvenate, giving that Wolverine to come back even better and stronger than before. My God, where I couldn't be able to wave my hand because I would hold it down like I didn't have the strength to lift it up to say, Hallelujah! I am an overcomer. I am a survivor. I am in Christ Jesus. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of Christ. Hallelujah. I'm called out one. Woo, thank you, Jesus. And I shall not be ashamed who God has called me to be. God, we give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you for that one today. If you said yes to Christ, put salvation in the chat. If you rededicated your life, go ahead and put our reded rededicate my life today. We will be reaching out to you, letting you know that God loves you. You don't have to walk alone. 
You don't have to walk alone. And that's the thing about it. Sometimes we do this journey so long as we stay in isolation, we do more harm than good. Let's walk together in unity. We want to thank everyone for coming out today. So God, we thank you and we seal this prayer because we thank you for victory in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone who wants to make True Vine there, this is the home of place of, of where you can grow. Just let us know. And if you are, just raise your hand here. If you're on the on Facebook or YouTube, let us know that you would like to become a disciple of True Vine. We'll have classes for you. We'll reach out. Our person that's over that will take care of that. So we praise God for you. Come on, let's clap our hands for the Lord. As we prepare to close, we want you to continue to be with us in our fellowship as we're doing our Hispanic Latino month. And back to church, we'd love to see you on next week. We are going to be fellowshipping over here with the food truck. Let's eat and have fun, play games, and just enjoy one another. Get to know one another. We put it in the hands of our praise team. you